Once upon a time, there was a king who believed he was handsome. He had a mirror and used to say all the time, Beautiful mirror, tell me sweetly, who in the world is more handsome than me? His wife tolerated this for one, two, three, four times. But finally she said, Keep quiet, my king, there's nothing to do. There's someone I know more handsome than you. Infuriated, he responded, If you don't tell me within three days who's more handsome than I am, you'll be killed. The poor queen became bewildered and retired to her rooms, where she stayed the entire time. As she was trying to think of someone on the last day, she went out on the balcony. An old woman passed by and said, Your Majesty, I beg you for some alms. Let me be, good woman, the queen responded. I've got my own troubles. I know everything, the old woman said, and I also know how to make your troubles go away. Then come up here, said the queen. The old woman mounted the stairs, and the queen asked, What do you know? Everything the king has said, she replied. And so there's some way for me to get out of this? Yes, my lady. I'll give you whatever you want, said the queen. I don't want anything, the old woman declared. At noon, you are to go and have lunch with the king. Then you are to ask him for a favour. He will ask, what favour? To grant you your life? You are to respond, no. Then he will say, so you concede. And you will tell him, no, the son of the emperor of France, covered with seven veils, is more handsome than you. The old woman departed, and the queen did as she said. Then the king responded, If this prince is truly better looking than I am, you can do with me as you wish. Three days later, the king left with his retinue to seek out the emperor of France. When he presented himself, he said, I would like to see your son. All right, the emperor replied, but he is sleeping just now. After some time had passed, the emperor brought the king into the room where his son was sleeping. When he lifted the first veil, there was a glow. When he took off the second veil, the glow increased. Then the third and the fourth veils were lifted. And when he came to the last, the flames of the sun's beauty grew even more radiant, until the prince appeared with his scepter in his hand and sword at his side. Dazzled by such beauty, the king fainted and collapsed on the ground, and they had to give him smelling salts and essence to revive him. The emperor had him carried to his rooms and kept him there for three days. Before this king departs, the prince said to his father, I'd like to talk to him. So he went to the king and they began conversing until the prince said, Would you like to see me when you are at home? How is that possible? Take these three gold balls and when you would like to see me, throw them into the golden basin filled with three quarts of clean and pure milk and I shall appear just as I am now. So the king took the three gold balls and bid him farewell. When he returned home, he said to his wife, Here I am, do with me what you like. And the queen responded, May you be blessed. The king told her what had happened and showed her the three gold balls. But the king had suffered so much from the stress of his journey that he died at the end of three days. The queen was most distressed, but after four days she called for her faithful chambermaid and said, Go and fetch three quarts of clean, pure milk. Then she prepared the basin, and after filling it with milk she threw the three balls into the basin, and gradually the sword appeared, then the scepter, and finally the prince in person. They talked and conversed together, and then he left. The queen put the milk aside, and the next day she filled the basin with fresh milk and the prince appeared again. She did the same thing for many days, until the chambermaid became tired of this and said to herself, there's got to be something extraordinary beneath all this. So what she did, what did the chambermaid do? 
She broke a glass bottle, ground it into powder and hid the powder in her bosom. The next day when the queen sent her to fetch milk as she usually did, the chambermaid poured the powder into the milk while she was on the stairs. Then, as soon as the queen threw the three balls into the basin, she saw the sword and the scepter appear covered with blood, and then the prince in a bath of blood from wounds caused by the splinters of glass. When he saw her, he said, Ah, you've betrayed me. The queen begged his pardon a thousand times, but the prince's time was up, and he vanished and went back to his country. When his father saw his condition, he issued a proclamation that said he would give anything if a doctor could be capable of healing his son. Meanwhile, the city was draped in mourning, and the bells tolled for the prince. After having seen the prince in such a terrible condition, the queen could not take her mind off him. So after she dressed herself as a shepherd, she set out for her city in France. When it turned dark the first night, she entered a forest, where she took refuge in a tree in an open space and began saying her prayers. At midnight all the devils of hell arrived at the open space, and they sat down in a circle around their chief, who began to ask each one what they had done, until he came out to the last one, who was the lame devil of Zoppo. And you, you ugly thing, who never knows anything good to report. My lord, he replied, it's true that I've worked many years without much success, but this time I've something good to report. And he told the story about the king and the queen and the prince and how he had caused the chambermaid to deceive the queen. But now, he added, the prince has only three days to live, and since there's no hope for him, we'll be able to cart him away. But tell me, the chief devil asked, isn't it possible that someone will be able to cure this prince? There's a remedy, but I won't tell it, Zoppo responded. And why won't you tell us? Because somebody is listening. What are you saying, you fool, they all said. Who can you hear there? If there was someone here, he'd be able to be dead from fright. Nevertheless, he continued to say no while the chief devil argued with him. Finally, they all forced him to tell him the remedy. And he said, One day's walk from here there is a certain wood with a monastery that has glass herbs growing nearby. It's necessary to cap carry a couple of bags to gather the herbs. Once you have them, you've got to ground the herbs with a mortar and pestle and juice them into a glass. Then the juice has to be smeared on the prince from head to toe, and he'll be just as good as before. Upon hearing the remedy, the queen decided that it was time now to go to this monastery where the glass herbs were to be found. Well, she walked and walked, and finally she reached the monastery, where she called out to the hermits, but they exorcised her and barred her from entering. Don't exorcise me, she cried out. I've been baptized. So they opened the door and she asked for some glass herbs. And they gave them to her that very same evening. The next day she departed for the prince's city, which she found draped in mourning. Dressed as a shepherd, she presented herself to a guard who would not allow her to enter. But when the emperor heard her, he ordered the guard to let her pass. So she mounted the palace stairs and asked the emperor to dismiss all doctors and assured him that in two days she would cure the prince. The emperor, who didn't know what more could be done for his son, granted the request and ordered the servants to give the shepherd all that he demanded. So they brought him a mortar and he crushed the herbs. Then he collected the juice and began to spread it on the prince from head to toe. Wherever he smeared the juice, the wounds were cleaned. The shepherd did this for two days until the prince was completely cured. Then the shepherd called the emperor and returned his son to him, more healthy and more handsome than ever before. The emperor wanted to give him many treasures, but the shepherd didn't want anything and was already about to leave when the prince said to him, here, at least accept this ring as a souvenir. This is the only thing I'll take, the shepherd replied. 
and then said farewell. The poor queen returned to her home as soon as she could. Upon her return, she did not have the chambermaid fetch the milk as she usually did. Instead, she went and fetched it by herself, clean and pure. Then she shut herself in her room, poured the milk into the basin and threw in the three magic balls. All of a sudden, the prince appeared. But as soon as he saw her, he wanted to kill her. However, the queen threw herself at his feet and said, No, it wasn't me that betrayed you. I was the one who saved you. Then she showed him his ring. So the prince calmed himself, and the queen told him about her hardships and the story of the devil Zoppo. Then they decided to get married, and the prince set out for his own country. When he arrived at his father's palace, he told him all that had happened, and that he wanted to marry the queen. The emperor was very pleased, and they departed together to fetch the queen. When they arrived at the palace, they killed the chambermaid and took the queen with them. Once they returned to their realm, the wedding was celebrated. So they enjoyed life with all its fruits, while we sit there like a bunch of dried out roots.